Hello Pisces and welcome to your monthly horoscope for June for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the major takeouts for this month but then please stay with me I will then go into much greater detail to help you to understand what to expect this June. Now as the month begins the Sun is in the rather sedate fourth house. This is very much about home, emotion, family, your sense of environment. Now because there's a new moon that's still coming in from the end of last month, this can be a, a time of opportunity around those areas. But Mercury of course is in retrograde as the month begins, but that is going to unravel by the third and it comes out of shadow by the fourth. So if there has been niggles over paperwork, technology, any kind of uh, posting stuff, uh, the third house is more to do with our immediate everyday environments. So it could be, for example, um, like a, an upgrade that you needed to have on some technology that's caused some mischief. Um, you know, things like computer mouses just refusing to work for no particular reason. And they're very frustrating. And of course, we get a lot of updates these days in order to protect us. And if your kit is older, that can cause issues. So you may be thinking about making some changes in that area. But of course your ruling planets are Jupiter and Neptune and they are incredibly influential this month. Now Jupiter can bring you some fortune financially but Neptune can be a baffling influence as it intersects the full moon in Sagittarius which occurs on the 14th. That's going to require a lot of care so I'll be working my way through that with uh, with a, a, a great deal of detail in order to help you with that. Also, Neptune does go retrograde on the 28th, which goes on through to December the 4th. So I'll uh, unpick that one as well. So please stay with me. But if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what you can gain from astrology on a more personal basis, if you give me three pieces of birth data of your time, date and place of birth, I can give you a roadmap that you can use for the rest of your life. I can also give you a 12 month forecast and 30% off with my special package. Please see the link beneath this video. Finally, I'm nearly at that 100,000 mark in terms of subs. I'd be honoured if you would. If you haven't already, please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Stay with me for much more coming next. So Pisces, the most wonderful thing I can tell you for your June forecast is that Jupiter could, despite this very charged economic environment that we're all living in at the present time, actually bring you some financial rewards. The one thing I would say is because Jupiter is in your second solar house, but in a conjunction with Mars for the first four days, what I wouldn't advise you to do is to be too quick to to uh, use your resources on anything based on impulse because Mars of course is very much to do with living in the moment it's the planet of desire it's great if you want to enjoy the good things in life like some calorific goodies or perhaps have a little bit of a flutter but if you're thinking about a serious risk of your money on something that's more speculative the combination between Mars and Jupiter because they're both in your second house all this month, could tempt you by something that might have shaky foundations. You know, whether it's a get rich quit scheme or it's cyber currencies, or you know, you're, you're perhaps trying to capitalize on selling as a marketeer from home, which obviously a lot of people do very successfully. All of these areas can have opportunities for you if carefully researched. Just don't act on impulse. And if you don't act on impulse, I think there's a chance that there could be a windfall that comes your way this month. It could actually come, do you know, as late as the last two or three days as Venus and Jupiter, two planets of luck, forge a, a delightful combination. But the Sun, of course, as we start this month, is asking you to think very much about how you feel about things. Now that seems a strange thing to say to a Pisces person because feelings is very much part of your uh, way of being. So the astral archetypes would say. But there is that other part of your nature that can remember your fish going in two directions. 
So as much as you can be very sensitive and emotional, there's another part of you that can run very cool and be quite detached about things. And I think a lot of astrologers miss that, to be honest. So I think the sun being in the fourth house is asking you to think, where would you be most comfortable? Where, what environment would you really flourish in? Because if you're in an environment at the moment which isn't working for you, thinking about the people you'd like to be more closely located to could be as part of the theme of this month because of the fact that Mercury, Venus, Uranus and the North Node are all in your third house. That's very much about your conscious thoughts, very Gemini-like, even though they're in the sign of Taurus. And of course, Mercury is retrograde to begin with. So Venus in your third house gives you a, a tremendous ability to articulate yourself with a smoothness but Mercury's retrograde may mean that something has broken down over the last couple of weeks of, of May. Things haven't quite worked out. There's been communication that's not been quite as smooth as you would like. You have the opportunity, once Mercury goes direct, to sort that out right through to the 13th. But that could, the overall theme could be you thinking about who do I want to be closely located to so that may mean some kind of of move or change to your uh, existing abode which suits your purposes um, in a better way now also venus at the start of this month is in a delightful link with mars so that also could be quite fortunate you know because venus in the sign of taurus is good for you also it's its home zone it's in dignity Venus here is very much about money, so um, money linked to something, third, second, is it your inventiveness that can bring some money to you? Is it the way that you express your ideas? Could it be, you know, doing something with siblings in some way? Some kind of good news can come in the first 12 days on the back of those two. Now the sun is going to start to forge a very constructive link with Saturn from the 13th. But Saturn does slam on the brakes from the 4th. And of all the zodiac signs, I think Saturn is probably in the toughest location for you. Just being really uh, honest about it. So the 12th house retrograde goes on through to October the 23rd. If you're someone who's very much in touch with the shadow side of your nature, the side that, you know, we all find more difficult to integrate into ourselves. Um, I think this can be a time of, of great opportunity to become much more comfortable and at ease with some of the things that actually you don't always find that um, delightful in life. You know, whether it could be um, some past issues that are still holding a bit too much sway. You know, is a past experience still needing to be looked at? and understood maybe you can't take away the pain of whatever happened but if you can get some more air around it that could be very liberating on the other hand saturn's retrograde in the 12th house could be very dominating and could lead to a period where you actually want to squirrel yourself away and not interact with people but i don't necessarily think that's the way to go i think it's like being aware of the things we're anxious or we fret about or we stress about but then actually finding a way to share those things with people that you can really trust and if you do i think it can be such a, a rejuvenating uh, retrograde to be honest it's also possible that you could if you're someone who thought you'd sorted through all your stuff something could come back into your consciousness in a more powerful way during that time but mercury moves on the 13th into the sign of Gemini, where it once was uh, last month. And that really completes the process of the retrograde. And for you, again, that's getting you thinking about where you live. But the full moon on the 14th is balancing the old maxim of work and life. If you're someone who's a very dedicated person to your work, and Pisces people can often go so beyond the call, really being very, very caring for others, but to the point that your own needs become invisible. And I think 
what this particular full moon is saying. It's so important because your co-ruler Neptune is forging a pivot between the sun and the moon in a T-square. And Neptune can be very draining. So if you've got too much work responsibility, you can feel drained. Too much emotional responsibility at home, drained. There has to be some give. And part of the thing that I think you can do, and this is where Saturn's retrograde can be helpful, is to give yourself the permission to find that time to just do some breathing, to listen to some peaceful music, to go for a walk in nature, to write down your thoughts, to have those moments of escapism that you're so richly connected to. So I think it's a challenging full moon, this one, and Neptune can almost like kid you on how you might want to react to this energy but I, I would face it up. I wouldn't try to escape the reality of trying to balance or toggle all the different demands you have. And one of the ways to do this may be to say no. You know, that if you're always the one the boss rings when other people are unreliable, to turn in on a day off, that's the type of thing you should push back on. Now, the 21st sees the solar, uh, the summer solstice, sorry, and obviously the beginning of the second cardinal quadrant for you the sun moving into the fifth house cancer is brilliant it feels like your physical energy will really rise on that day and the next 13 weeks is a great opportunity to be much more galvanized in the way you interact with others venus does move on the 23rd though so into your home zone this would be brilliant for a spot of redecoration or are you actually going to move home i think some pisces people may consider that your ruler goes retrograde on the 28th the benefits that neptune give you are absolutely awesome but you know that being too self-sacrificing is one perhaps living in your imagination and um trying to believe your reality when something keeps telling you that your your view of a situation isn't quite the facts because you still love someone or someone you love doesn't behave very well but you keep forgiving them because it suits you somehow that type of stuff is what neptune's asking you to look at over the time through to december the 4th now the 29th has a terrific new moon because it forges a great link to jupiter now remember i said to you before don't be too speculative with money on an impulse. Jupiter square, the sun, and of course the moon is a very upbeat aspect. It's one of those squares that can work quite well. So for example, if you wanted to give some money to a good cause, um, Jupiter square, the sun, and the moon is lovely for that. You know, it can make people very kind hearted. Also, Jupiter forges a beautiful link with Venus and Venus is in a semi-sextile to the new moon. So. Maybe you're going to want to invite people around to your home and spoil them, people that you really love and care for. Just be conscious, though, that there is a big clash between Mars and Pluto the last three days. These two are the rulers of Scorpio, Mars traditional, Pluto modern, higher octave. When they get into a scrap like this, it can be, it can be quite bloody uh, bloody minded. So Pluto's in your sector of your future and your friendships, Mars in the second house of your personal values and money. So if you feel that someone's taking you for granted, perhaps what this new moon is going to crystallise in your mind is the way in which you can firm up your boundaries that makes you feel more secure and more respected. But then there's another part of you that's going to think, well, I don't want to just become, you know, in the material world, Patrick. I want to stay being the caring, compassionate person I am, because that's so much part of me, and that's wonderful. In my draconic chart, my ascendant is actually in Pisces, so, uh, and I also have a very Neptunian, and Jupiter, I have Jupiter conjunct Neptune in my natal chart, so in the first house, so, you know, that's very much to do with the type of work I do, but very much attunement to music and sensitivities, and so on. So. You know, I really get the Piscean thing. It's lovely to be a giver. It's lovely to be very caring. But I think at the end of this month, you're being asked to give to your own pleasures, your own enjoyments, to give yourself the opportunity to have some 
fun and that could have all sorts of wonderful outcomes for you even all the way to a romantic possibility if you're single. It's been a pleasure being with you. Good luck and goodbye.